you ever seen a crawdad that chunky before? Going for realistic plus chunky. I kind of stay consistent with if it's gonna be chunky, it has to be realistic. It can start looking really goofy quickly. So lots of carving. That's the picture I was going off of. That one looks like it eats well. Let's get to cutting. There's gonna be a lot of detail and stuff happening this way too. One side has to be flat. We're gonna do an open pour, but on the side that's not flat, there's gonna be a lot of detail. Ooh. I had to think about that for a while, but I have not done fun facts on crawdads. I'm gonna make a copy of this really quick too. It's best if your scanner can close all the way, but it's gonna waste a lot of black ink. Oh no, yeah, that's a lot of ink, man. What a waste. That's just for uh, carving detail on this later. I thought I just sliced into my hand meat, but I have thick skin. That felt horrible. Such heebie-jeebies. Because I was grabbing right here and I went, Yep. You know those like pens at the doctor's office when they draw your blood and they, it pokes you really quick, but they set it against your skin and it was like stretching my skin and slicing it. I'll stop. Have I showed you guys my plans for this bait? Open pour, excessively chunky crawdad. You see that? My intention is to use, did I already say this? One second. I have not told you diddly squat. I've just, I just edited this video all the way up until now. So this big bump right here is this big bump right there. And that's a four aught VMC drop dead swim bait hook. And it's got a little twist lock bait lock holder thing. Twist lock goes on this side, comes under there and is very protected. It's gonna nestle itself right in there, but be ready at all times for a hook set and pop out of there and very high hopes for this bait. On both ends, there's gonna be a lot of mass back here and a lot of mass up here. And a narrow, even more narrow than that connection point in the middle, giving the body even more mass back here is the intention to keep these claws and this head chunky enough that there's even more mass on the other side of where the hook is. Fellas, this is an action out of a bait that no, let's not get that serious about it. It's a good, it's a good, let's just say when baits do that, they catch fish. It's not that big of a deal. Just about attempted to communicate some fishing theory to you. That never ends well, so I'll stop myself. Let's make this bait. Crawfish, craydids, crawdaddies, crawdads, that's what I say. Freshwater lobsters, mountain lobsters, Rock lobsters, mud bugs, yabbies? Who says yabbies? If you say yabbies, where are you from? What do you, why do you say that? I turned that heater off, it's, it'll turn off soon. Tradewell decoys. He's been sending me apparel for years, ever since I started my YouTube channel. Shirts, he sent me this awesome hat, so I thought I'd shout him out in this video, now that I remembered. Right on. So the body of not only a crawdad, but crabs, lobsters, prawns, or shrimp are made up of 20 segments grouped into two main body parts, cephalothorax and the abdomen. Each segment can possess one pair of appendages. On average, crawfish grow to 6.9 inches. 
I think mine's a good size. In North America, there are 330 different species of crayfish. I think the majority of the country calls them crayfish, so I'll just call them crayfish. They're found in lowland areas where oxygen will be rising up from springs. And there's different species of crayfish, even in like the Pacific Northwest that don't need so much oxygen. And there's a lot of differences in all the different species. It's Louisiana's official state crustacean, prestigious title. They produce 10 million pounds per year of crayfish. Australia has over a hundred different species and they have the world's largest, three largest. The largest one being the Tasmanian giant freshwater crayfish. Let's take a look at this fella. It has previously been reported to attain weights of up to six kilograms, 13 pounds, and measuring 31 inches long, 80 centimeters. That is with certainty going to be a future, a future build. I guarantee you, I will make one of those. The fossil records show that they're 30 million years old. I don't know, data of fossil records always do that. They say they're 30 million years old, but then it's like something might suggest that they're 130 million years old. They're 115 and stuff, so. They're a billion years old. I guess if everybody thought that, it wouldn't really make a difference, who cares? And they are susceptible to infections. Oh no. Such as the crayfish plague. Oh no. And to the environmental stressors including acidification, so they don't like acid. But in Europe, yes, they are particularly threatened by the crayfish plague, which is caused by the dirty North American water mold. <laughs> Epithomyces estiklicki, Aphonomyces estaki, water mold. It was introduced to Europe with, uh, when they introduced North American species into Europe of crayfish. And also, if there's acid rain, they die really easy. Has anybody ever experienced acid rain? I've never... It must never rain acid where I'm at, because I've never experienced acid rain. Well, heck, here's the Wikipedia page. I'm here. Let's look. It's precipitation that's unusually acidic. Hydrogen ions. Too many of them. It's shown to have adverse impacts in forests, freshwater soils, killing microbes, insects, and blah blah blah, but it doesn't really have much of an impact on a human. You can bathe in acid rain. Okay. Understood. Crawfish don't like that, though. Crayfish. Sorry. Global crayfish production is centered in Asia primarily in China. They account for 95% of the world's crayfish supply. It says crawfish right there. I'll say crawfish for that one. So if you pity the poor crawfish, blame China. As bait, they work great. Great bait. You can pop out the tail meat and just use that, or you can use the whole stinking thing. You could probably catch a bluegill with one if your hook set was lucky. But this is one of these species where if you're going to use it as bait, make sure you get it from the spot you're fishing in. And don't transfer crayfish or crawdads or crawfish around. Keep them where they're at. They're sensitive. You don't want to start no crayfish plague. 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 Crayfish plague. People keep these as pets too. If I ever get a tank going in here with life forms in it, I'm going to put some crayfish in it for sure. Crawdads. That's what they will be called in that tank. They eat shrimp pellets, various vegetables, but will also eat tropical fish food. Regular fish food, algae wafers, everything. And small fish that can be captured with their claws. I should get some small, slow fish for them. Keep them adept in their claws functioning, you know? Well, there's nothing about reproduction or nothing about their embryonic stages. Wikipedia really lets you down when it comes to a crawdad. That was a lame one, but it's Wikipedia's fault. Fun facts are over. Right on. I have a mold box right here, ready to go. Just have to screw it all together. First, let's take a look at the beautiful high gloss finish and all of the carvings. On this crawdad, I decided not to go with eyes or a face or anything, just straight to tentacles, bumpy tentacles. Got the golf ball finish on most of the upper body there. Some holes are bigger than others. There's the, uh, Let's not give that a name, but that's where you put the hook twist wire thing. Goes in right about in there, comes out somewhere in there. Pretty sure there's a plethora of ways to rig this. I got some different things to try. Even some more kind of weighted swim bait hook like stuff. Those wedge heads though, those look awesome. I might try some of that stuff for this bait too. Let's grab the medium thick black super glue. Shouldn't need more than that. Books called an ABC of Child of Travel. 
And uh, they're really about the maybe 100% decidedly. Eastern European. That's kind of hard on that drill. I have a bigger drill. Okay, easy does it, right? I think we can go with two. <laughs> Maybe we can't go with two. That's a pretty full bucket of silicone too. Where's my key? There you are. Did that have a light? I think this thing has a light. I knew that thing would come in handy for bait making someday. Oh man, that's a pretty big mold. I'm gonna go with like 12 ounces. This stuff's one to 10. Good enough. There was some blue silicone on the stirring stick. And it was kind of crumbly, so it's gonna have blue flakes. Here's a really big undercut on the tail. I just wanna make sure the air gets out. Yes, I'm stirring this because I see white streaks in it. Hey man, you do what you gotta do. Oh yeah. There's like a half inch right there of silicone until you get to the furthest, tippiest top of the bait. Okay. I know this stuff might not be perfectly level with what the liquid's at, but that'll get me close. I shimmed it with some sandpaper. When you have an open pour, one piece mold, it's good to make sure you're level as much as you can. It's like 10 hours later. That's pushing it a little bit, but I live on the edge, so it's fine. Which side's got the claws? That's this side. The antenna eyes has some flashing going on, but it's a nice clean line everywhere else. That one's clean as heck, look at that. And it's clean. All it took was a few pinches and pulls. You guys ready to pour bait? I don't know if those antennas turned out at all, but pouring those weren't too hard. A lot of heat gunnage required. My goodness. For some reason I want to put a copper plate on top of this. And maybe I can just pull all that off at once. And here we go. Oh, it worked. It stayed on the plate. Miraculous. That is way too light. I thought that dark was gonna show mo show through way more. I'm liking how it bends right there very easily though. Perfect craw action. Don't mind the mangled antenna. Whoops. I put no effort in pouring this first one because I want to rig it. And that is not an unrealistic size for one of these dudes. Look at that hook tucked in there nicely. Isn't that adorable? Cool. Let's make some prettier ones. Bait plastics June bug. Gonna keep it translucent. Cause I really want this to show through. Shiny blue flake. This is gonna be the claws. More June bug. Okay, I want this to kinda, the texture of the mold to show up. So I need something pearl. Tequila sunrise. That'll define the texture of the mold a little bit better. That's pretty. Shape down there. Next color, green pumpkin, some translucent orange, and a little bit of blue sheen. Monkey's milk, monkey milk. This is gonna get weird. Okay, that's gonna be like the core. I need something more translucent before that. I'm gonna pretty much try to fill 
the mold up with this and just leave a little bit of space. I gotta get these ready though. And yeah, I want it hot still. Well, let's hope that this looks as good as I intended. Ah, I didn't degas the red and it's all bubbly, but it looks pretty good. Very strange, swirly, translucent red to green pumpkin though. That's pretty cool. It's just those dang bubbles. This will all just peel off at the right time. We're getting there. I apologize, I demolded this, but the camera wasn't rolling. That's a pretty natural looking yabby, eh? Good colors, there's some depth. You see the red first, you know good old green pumpkin on the bottom, but you see the red first. You can see some of that blue flake in the craw. Claw, craw, craw claw. See how translucent it is? Only in the claws and the tentacles. Maybe towards the side a bit. But chip, chip. You like the craw, Dad, Chip? Okay, 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 okay. I had some purple claws from a different pour and I put them in this mold. Then I have this really, really yellow green pumpkin. I poured that in and then I poured it back out. And now, I'm gonna have a really funky core. Like a red violet with blue, blue, blue flake. I might put some chartreuse in it too. It's kind of swirly in there. Colors melted together a little bit. That might look pretty cool. Look at that. I like the purple claws too. I don't think I would have liked blue as much. I could just do that all day. <laughs> Stunning. I hope you are all ready for some Spring, I almost said springtime. You know where my mind's at. Wintertime bathtub test footage. Unfortunately. I would say though, action achieved. Precisely what I was going for. Even the structure of this fin on the back, causing it to, when you pull up on your line, glide nice and far forward on the way down. Like a craw just going back into its hole after having dashed out of a different one. That's what it looks like. That's what's going on. In the bathtub, you didn't get to see a lot of what this action's good for, which is while it's suspended and doing its dashes, it's gonna give it a lot of dolphin kick. It's gonna give it a lot of porpoising, which I assume is just a natural imitation of what a crawdad really does. They bend their tail. They kick themselves forward by doing that, you know? Come this spring, this will actually be a bait that I catch a fish with later because it's a soft bait, I can reproduce a lot of them and I won't just snag the one and not be able to do that, you know. That happened last year. To almost everything I was intending to catch a fish with, I, I snagged. Not this year, I got smarter. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one. That's it, video's over. On to the next bait. It's like 10 hours later. Don't mind the mangled antenna. That one's clean as heck. This will all just peel off at the right time. Boop, blue, blue. Hey man, you do what you gotta do. Bumpy tentacles. Ah, that was a lame one, but it's Wikipedia's fault.